Thank you for joining today. We'll be focusing on forward bends and letting go. So for now, just sit comfortably in your space. Let your shoulders roll back, hands drop down, tuck your chin just a little bit, feel the back of the neck lengthen, and start Ujjayi breath where you breathe in and out just through your nose. Each time we do yoga, it's a dance between control and surrender, between pushing and letting go, and when to push and when to let go becomes part of the creative process. We think of it as an exploration along our journey, along our being, After all, Buddha said, you can only you lose what you cling to. You can only lose what you cling to. So we'll see if we can find this balance today, this connection. You can start with just the breath. Every time we inhale, we take in air, we take in energy, we take in joy, maybe, some kind of uplifting emotion. And then when we exhale, we let go. We let go of the air. Maybe we let go of a little stress, a little anxiety, some worries that we have. So each breath is like that dance. Let's open our eyes and take three breaths together. Bring your arms by your sides. Inhale, reach your arms up to the sky. Exhale, release, let the arms drop down, the head drops down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, release. This time we'll change a little. Inhale, reach up. Come to the top, clasp your hands together, flip and press. And we'll exhale, lean to the right. We're pulling on that left side of the body. Lengthen it, stretch it. Inhale, back to the center. Exhale, lean to the left. We're lengthening the right side of our body. Inhale, back to the center. Exhale, float our arms down. Good. Let's move through our entire spine with cat and cow. So come to all fours with your hands right below your shoulders and your knees right below your hips. Let your belly arch. Take your gaze up. Roll your shoulders back. Inhale. Exhale, round through the spine, pull and lift, tuck your chin, tuck your hips, feel the space between the vertebrae. Inhale, arch, belly drops down, send your gaze up. Exhale, round, pull and lift. Inhale, arch. Exhale, round. One more, inhale, exhale. Come back to neutral. Let's roll onto our toes, press our hips up to the sky and drop the heels downward to the floor. This is Adha Mukha Swanasana. Might feel tight right at first, so feel free to pedal the feet. Loosen up the backs of the ankles and calves. 
And this pose might feel more like the push. So let's drop to a child's pose so that we can let go. Drop it down, drop the forehead down, relax through the low back, the sacrum as the knees open just a, a slight bit. Come back up to Adha Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. And release back down to a child's pose. We're gonna do this a couple of times, two more times, how about? Inhale, come back up to downward facing dog. Exhale, press back, child's pose. Inhale, downward facing dog, trying to warm just a little bit. Exhale, downward, our child's pose. Stay here for just a breath. And then let's lift up to Adha Mukha Svanasana and start to walk our hands back to our heels. This is our first forward bend. So it could be the most intense one you do all day. So soften your knees perhaps. Let's let go of the pressure in our back and in our hamstrings. Then maybe start to straighten the knees just a little bit. Let go of the pressure of keeping your hands on the ground. Not all of us will have our hands on the ground. Let go of that expectation. Just breathe and feel the body. And let's roll up through our spine. Nice and slow, bring your arms back by your sides. Excellent, let's come to the top of our space once again so we can warm our whole body with Sira Namaskara A. Inhale, reach your arms up to the sky. Exhale like a release as we fold forward, release tension and stress. Inhale, bring your hands to your shins, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down to the mat, step back to a plank. This first one will drop to our knees. Let your elbows bend and see if you can hover your body over the, the mat for just a moment. Slide on the tops of your feet, come to upward facing dog, Urva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, roll back to your through your toes or through your knees to Adha Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Good. Take one more breath here. Inhale. Exhale. Bend your knees, look forward. Inhale, step or hop to your hands. Exhale, fold into the legs, Uttanasana. Inhale, reverse swan dive, reach up to the sky. Exhale, Samastiti. Let's try it again. Inhale, lift. Such a beautiful way to connect breath with movement. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, look up, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, a step or hop back to a plank. This time I'll show my knees lifted, but you are welcome to drop to your knees. Take chaturanga, elbows bend, see if you can hover for just a breath. Inhale, lift to upward facing dog, Urva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, roll back, Adha Mukha Svanasana. Drop those heels back down again. The heels don't have to touch, right? They're just reaching there. We do the best we can. Good. Bend your knees, look forward, inhale, step, or you can hop to your hands, your choice. Exhale, fold into your legs, Uttanasana. 
Inhale, reverse swan dive, reach up. Exhale, samastiti. Let's take it one more time, then we'll move forward. Inhale, lift. Exhale, fold down, Uttanasana. Inhale, look up, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, hands down, step or hop back. It's your choice, Chaturanga. You can be on your knees, again, your choice. Inhale, Urva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, Adha Mukha Svanasana. Release those heels. Tuck your chin just a little. Feel that length through the back and through your neck. Good, now let's start getting into our hips a little bit deeper. Lift your right leg, inhale, up and back behind you for a three-legged down dog. Exhale, bring your knee forward and drop your left knee to the floor. So we're in our low lunge and janyasana. Here's where a block might help you, block or two. If it feels low to the ground, you can have your hands on, a, on blocks to lift you. If you don't have blocks, just bring your hands to your knee. That will help as well to feel that, that pre, uh, press upward just a little bit more. Good. Feel that stretch both through the right hip and long into the left hip flexor. Feels really great. Sacrum in the low back as well. Good. Now keep your hands on the floor or on the block. Either way, if your hand is on your knee, that's fine too. Let's bring our left hand down to the floor and reach the right arm up. A little twist, spiral those hips. If that's too much for your shoulder hand to your hip. Feel that rotation through the low back. Inhale. Exhale, take your hand back down to the floor or the block. Let's lift up onto our left toe and walk our foot forward so that we can step our left heel to the ground and straighten the right knee. This is our pyramid pose. And as we exhale, we'll deepen into the legs. Now you see my hands are on a block. If you can touch the floor, fine. If not, use the blocks. If you don't have blocks, hands can come onto your leg. The straighter the right knee, the more you will feel the stretch through the, um, the hamstring on that right side. So let's just breathe and let go. Let go of tension in that hamstring, in your back. Nothing to do here but breathe and stretch out tight spots in the body. Good. Take one more breath. Inhale. Exhale. Bend your right knee, place your hands down to the floor. Let's lift that right leg up and back behind us. Three-legged down dog. And release that right foot to the floor. On our left side, same poses. Inhale, lift the left leg up and back behind you. Exhale, bring it through in between your hands and drop the right knee down to the floor. Adjust as you did last time on the other side, maybe with blocks, maybe hands on your knee, maybe your hands are on the ground. Either way, we've got this nice press into the left hip, some length through the right hip flexor. Make sure your knee stacks on top of your ankle so you're not putting undue pressure on that knee there. Good. Now twist, we'll keep our right hand on the floor or on the blocks and extend our left arm up. Pull that left hip back, draw the right hip under so it's twisting through our chest 
but also through the hips, through the sacrum. Inhale. Exhale, place your hand down. Lift up onto your right foot and walk it forward so that you can place your heel on the ground and straighten your left knee for our pyramid pose. Feel free to reach again for the blocks if you need them or hands on the leg. The straighter the knee, the deeper you will feel the stretch. And it could go all the way up through our glutes, that whole um, underside, that whole backside of our leg. Beautiful. Take one more breath, inhale, exhale. Bend your left knee, bring your left hand, your hands down to the floor. Let's swing this left leg up and through and place your foot on the floor. Good job. Bend your knees, look forward. Inhale, step or hop to your hands. Exhale, fold into the legs. Inhale, reverse swan dive, reach up. Exhale, Samastiti. Good. Let's take our feet hip width distance apart. Have a block handy if you use one. Hands to your hips. Look up, inhale. Exhale, fold forward, that hinge in the hips. And we'll reach down. If you can grab your toes, wrap your index finger and thumb around your big toe. If you can't grab your toes, that's what the block is for. Reach down for that block. Either way, let's straighten our arms. Inhale, lift Uddiyana Bandha, that navel lock. Exhale, bend your knees, I mean bend your elbows, and pull forward. Good, easier to pull forward if you have your hands on your toes, but you can do it on a block too. This is Padagustasana. Let's just breathe and let go of the things that we don't need. We don't need tension in our back. We don't need to hold our breath to feel like we're gonna do something for our body. Breathing out is essential to letting go. One more breath here. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, look up. Exhale, bend your knees and take your hands under your feet. Now, if you are not able to do that, it's fine. Just bend your knees and hold on to your block. That's gonna relax your back. Those of you who are very flexible, feel free to straighten your knees. Shift your weight forward just a little bit and you can feel that deep lengthening in the hamstrings. Loosen up your neck, loosen up your jaw. Beautiful. Take one more breath. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, look up. Exhale, bring your hands away from your feet or your block to your waist. Inhale, lift up the rest of the way. Exhale, step your feet back together. Nicely done, I'm gonna move this block out of the way. Let's take a flowing vinyasa into open hip positions for warrior two poses. So we'll reach up, inhale. Exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale, look up, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, step or hop back to your plank. Chaturanga. Inhale, Urva Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, Adha Mukha Svanasana. Nicely done. Like we did before, inhale, lift your right leg up and back behind you. Exhale, bring it through and drop that left heel down. Windmill your arms up and around to Virabhadrasana B. Good. 
pull your pelvis under so you're opening up that inner thigh opening up that hip excellent feel that right hip starting to wake up just a little let's deepen the pose with parsvakonasana so you can take your right forearm to your thigh or you can reach your hand to the floor feel free to grab a block on the pinky toe side of your foot and pull the left arm overhead you can also have your hand all the way on the ground it's always an option to deepen remember you're playing around with that push and pull of the poses here Good. Inhale, press into the floor or the block and lift up, straighten through both legs. Exhale, take Trikonasana. Reach your right hand down to your shin, your ankle. Some of you can grab your big toe. If you're using your block, move it to the big toe side and then send that gaze upward. Now this shoulder, if it feels like too much, hand to the hip is fine. Always fine. Feel that stretch, length through the legs, length through the torso. Good. Inhale, lift up. Beautiful. Gonna move this block. Exhale, turn your toes toward each other. So we're in this nice wide pose. Take your hands to your hips. Look up, inhale. Exhale, fold forward. Take your hands down, maybe to the floor, maybe onto a block. Walk your hands back between your feet. Press into the floor, look up, lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold yourself back down, relaxing your jaw, relaxing your neck. Shift your weight toward your toes so that you can feel these hamstrings stretching back here. Nice long back here, all the way open through the sacrum. Inhale, press your hands into the floor, look up. Exhale, bring your hands to your waist. Inhale, lift up. Good, let's take Prasarita B. So we're gonna pull our elbows toward each other. Look up, inhale. Exhale, fold forward. Draw those elbows together. So we're squeezing right in between our shoulder blades in this forward fold. Opens up our chest a little bit. We can feel that sensation through the upper back. Good. Inhale, lift all the way up. Excellent. Exhale, release your hands. Turn that left toe now and we'll bend. We're in warrior two on the left side. If you've got your block, you can shift it with you. Put it on that pinky toe side, ready for the next pose. But let's hang out here for just a few breaths in our warrior two. Pelvis under, hips open. Feel that, that strength through the whole torso. Strength in this pose for sure nice and deep through the hips good drop your left forearm to the thigh or you can bring your left hand to that block or the floor and pull the right arm overhead feel this strong reach into the torso and the side body great work Good. Inhale, lift up. Let's straighten through our leg. So extend that knee for Trikonasana. Exhale, come back down. You can bring your hand down to the to the to your foot, or move your block to the big toe side. Send your gaze up. Maybe the hand on the hip. That's a great place to go. Good. Beautiful. Inhale, lift back up. 
exhale we can shift that out of the way turn your toes toward each other one more time this time we're going to take our hands behind us and clasp them together press into the fingers look up pull your shoulder blades back send your gaze up to open up through the chest and exhale fold yourself forward to let the low back lengthen and pull your arms away from your back now if this is really hard for you try it this way with a strap you can have the strap to open up that space between your shoulders so that's certainly an option it might give you a little bit more uh, mobility in the shoulders definitely change it if you need to good inhale lift up nice job exhale just set that strap down if you're using it one more forward bend here we've done so many it feels great stretch your arms this is prasarita d inhale exhale take your hands down grab onto your legs somewhere you can grab onto your toes if you're able to reach them index finger and thumb to the big toe press into the floor into the legs open and stretch that side of the body and then pull yourself forward we can feel the hips hamstrings and back and we are doing a little bit of bicep here which is nice long stretch through that whole side of the body good one more breath inhale exhale gently lift up inhale exhale bring your hands to your waist inhale lift up good job let's turn the toes toward um, toward that left knee take a breath inhale exhale windmill the hands down to the floor shift this left leg up and back behind you inhale and exhale release bend your knees come down to a child's pose good some of the poses that we have the hardest time letting go in are pigeon poses hip poses nice deep poses so let's come up to our down dog Adho Svanasana and we'll extend our right leg up and back behind us inhale exhale bend your right knee and bring it forward lay it down as best as you can parallel to the top of your mat that may mean that this right hip stays a little bit lifted so you grab a block or a blanket pillow and you can place that block underneath your hip to feel um, that elevation in the hip so you can stay here if you are able to go deeper that's great you may or may not need that help and that support so you can maybe walk forward to your elbows another great use of the block is on underneath the elbows so it helps you to deepen but not go all the way to the floor or you can just lay all the way down and i think a lot of times hip poses are so hard because they're so closely tied to our emotions and how hard it is sometimes to let go of deep emotions. We like to hold on sometimes to anger, resentment, even jealousy. So it's hard to release those feelings. Sometimes we have to learn that we have to let go. <laughs> we have to release because we may not have ever been in control anyway.
Breathe through it. Take one more breath here. Inhale. Exhale. Let's lift ourselves up onto our hands. We'll raise our body. And if you're on a block or a blanket, shift it off to the side and let's bend both knees and sit down onto that right hip. So I've got both legs bent. We'll tuck our right leg under just a little bit and maybe reach back for your left foot. Now, if this is hard on your left knee, then you don't have to do it. You can just stay here. This is actually a really great little hip um, uh, adjusting pose, like a hip adjustment. You can stay here or take it into your, your hand. So you can hold, you can bring it into the crook of your arm. For those of you who are all nice and bendy, you can come into a, a, an adapted ekapata pose here. I'm not able to grab my foot with both hands, so I modify a little bit. Maybe you are too. If you're able to grab your foot with both hands, do it. You do you. <laughs> Never been one of my strengths here, but I work on it. Let's take one more breath. Inhale. Exhale. Release your hands. Release that leg. Let's bring ourselves back onto our hands and lift onto our left toe so that we can step the right foot back and come into down dog. We'll reset and move on to our other side. So extend your left leg up and back behind you. Bend your knee, bring it through. Sit parallel to the top of the mat <laughs> and walk yourself back. Now, if you need to elevate that hip again, do the same thing, yes? You can place that block or the blanket underneath the hip. Maybe the block is forward for you so that you can have something to rest on. Maybe you're just laying over the top of your leg. But move through that fighting that our hips do. Sometimes they kind of clench up at first when we first start. And then as we hold, as we breathe, it lets go. But it takes time takes patience. That's not going to do it uh, right away, at least not for me. I can only speak for me, I suppose. Good. One more breath, inhale, exhale. Inhale, lift up onto your hands, take any blocks or blankets out from under you and let's roll to sit on that left hip. I'm gonna turn my body so I can see you. So we're seated on our left hip and our right leg is bent behind. Maybe you're just staying in this nice stable position, adjusting the hips. Maybe you're reaching back your hand or your foot. Maybe you can bring it to the crease of your arm. Maybe you feel like you wanna reach and perhaps even grab. So many options. Those of you who are able to do two hands on your foot here, great. I would love to see it. <laughs> I can't see you, but I can imagine. Good. Take one more breath here. Inhale. Exhale. Let's move on. Release. Nicely done. We're going to bring our legs forward and extend them in front of us. So if you have a strap today, grab it, place it around your foot, feet, both feet. <laughs> Sit nice and tall, 
inhale. Exhale, fold forward and reach forward for your feet. If you are able to grab your feet with your hands, you do not need the strap. But if you need the strap, utilize it, use it. Pull yourself forward, draw your shoulders back, let your head drop down. This is truly a surrendering to our body, letting go. This pose gets, uh, we can feel our back, our hips, our hamstrings. So beneficial for the entire spine. One more breath here. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, come back up. We'll pull our strap off to the side. Set it down, good. And extend the legs open nice and wide for Upavista Konasana. Sit nice and tall, inhale. Exhale, walk your way forward as we reach down into this in, inner thigh rotated pose. We wanna to try to keep our toes pointed to the sky. That will help us to get this nice pull through the inner thigh and groin. And we can definitely feel it in the sacrum. Our time of just letting go through the hips, through the back. We don't always take the time to, um, to, to let go. We're busy people, we move around all day. Yoga gives us that chance, that excuse to let go. Take one more breath, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, walk your way back up. Great job. Bring your legs together, nicely done. Let's sit down or lay down on our back with our knees bent for bridge poses. So we'll have our feet hip width distance apart and we want the curve of the spine to connect to the ground. So if you need to, just lift your hips slightly, roll your pelvis to the sky, and then release the hips back down. That should get you a nice flat back feeling on the floor. Now bring your arms by your sides and start to roll up one vertebrae at a time, up your back, and you can take your hands, just press them into the floor, or you can clasp them underneath and pull your shoulder blades together. We have this opening sensation in the chest. Really nice stretch for the front of the body. We've done so many forward bends today. It's really important to do some back bending as well. Build up that strength in the back body and stretch out the front body. So we're gonna do three of these. This is number one of three. Take one more breath, inhale. Exhale, let go of your hands, roll yourself down. Nicely done. If you need to release your hips and your back, just let your knees drop toward each other for a moment in between sides. We're gonna take a second one. So our arms by our sides, roll up. Inhale, clasp the hands if you want or press the hands to the floor. Shimmy to the edges of your shoulders as you lift. Now feel that strengthening in the back body. Nice deep breathing. As always, your body is working hard.
Take one more breath here. Inhale. Exhale, come down, hands go away. Lower all the way down onto your back. Great job. Now, if it's in your practice to do wheel pose, Urva Danyarasana, you can place your hands back by your shoulder blades and will press up. That may be too intense for some of you, so I will show that. There's another way that we can be gentle with our blocks. We can lift the block underneath the hip and lay or just rest the hips on that block. So this feels really great for the sacrum. Maybe that option works for you. Let's go ahead and try Urva Danyarasana. Again, you certainly don't have to. But if you want to, place your hands back by your shoulder blades, fingertips facing toward the shoulders, and press into the floor. Push your chest forward. We're trying to work toward straightening up the arms. And you can definitely feel this stretch through the entire front of the body. Now, if you're in this pose and you need to come down, please do so. Just tuck your chin so that you're not hurting your neck. And if you're on a block, just love it. Just love being there. Maybe you're in bridge pose, love that too. Let's love it all. <laughs> Take one more breath. Inhale, exhale, come down. Everybody remove blocks, lower your bodies down. Good job. And bring your knees into your chest and just give them a hug. Just kind of rock back and forth. Might feel nice to sigh. <sighs> sigh out a little bit of that pressure. Good. Reach down, either grab your knees or the arches of your feet. And let's rock back and forth in a happy baby across that sacrum. Feels so nice to open up that space after doing those deep back bends. Good, we're gonna do one more forward bend on the floor, <laughs> upside down. If you have your strap, where'd mine go? There it is. If you have your strap, you can utilize it. Let's place the strap around both feet and extend it up to the sky. Now this is a gentle inversion, but we're gonna add a little hamstrings too. What I like about the strap is that it takes the pressure off of your abdominals it's because you can tug on the strap without having to use your core strength. So this is starting to ease our body just a little bit. Now, if you are able to reach your toes, you can certainly let go of the strap. And you're welcome to pull past 90 degrees if you want. See, I'm starting to pull back. Just as long as you want that hamstring stretch, you need to keep your knees straight. So if the knees start to buckle, don't go so far. Bring it back, bring it back. And that is fine. See what you can do. This also feels really nice on the shoulders and the neck to kind of lengthen out that entire torso. Feel that stretch. And like I said, it's like a forward bend upside down. So we're supporting our back by the floor and we're just allowing the legs to, to pull toward our body. Feel those hamstrings one more time. Last breath, inhale, exhale. Good job. Bend your knees, let's let go of our strap. Take your arms out to a T and let your legs drop to the right side of our body so we're in a spinal twist. Bring your hand to your legs if you want. You can turn your head over that opposite shoulder. And this is the ultimate chance to let go, right? We're in this deep, relaxing twist. 
You've been holding on to energy in your body this whole time. And now we want to let it go. We want to let it release. Good. Bring your legs back to the middle and let them float to the left. Let them fall down to the floor. You can use your hand to add a little pressure. The other arm is extended, lengthened. That right arm is extended. And you can turn your head over the right side. And just do what you can to let go now. To ease tension out of the body, the hips, the back, chest, shoulders, neck. We've worked hard. We're moving toward a rest. One more grateful breath. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, bring your legs back to the center. Exhale, float them down. Get yourself comfortable in your space for Shavasana. Now that may mean that you're propping your knees up with a pillow, a blanket underneath. You might have a a gentle blanket underneath your neck. Everything should just feel like it's able to rest and relax and absorb all of the good work that you've done. I'll leave you there to rest for a few minutes, give you that chance to absorb, like I said, that good work. And I'll just leave you with a few before I am quiet <laughs> with a few reminders. Breathe and let go. Breathe and release anything that doesn't serve you. Letting go is the hardest asana. Let it come, let it go. Let yourself sink deeper into Shavasana. Have no worries about anything. I will wake you up with the sound of a bell.
start to wake yourself up. Rotate through your wrists and your ankles. Point and flex your feet. Stretch your arms overhead to lengthen through your entire body. And roll over to one side in fetal pose. This signifies a renewal reset, starting again after doing a beautiful yoga practice. Gently press up to a comfortable seated position and bring your hands to heart center. Lao Tzu said, when I let go of what I am, I become what I might be. Thank you for your practice today. Namaste.